Greetings, I'm Tammy Jones. I would like for you to travel back with me to 1991. You're in a classroom. There's chalk and chalkboards on the wall. There's a record player that has historical music and readings. There's 30 student desks and one for the teacher. Welcome to my first year of teaching. For 20 years, I taught at the same high school that I graduated from. I could never dream of calling my former teachers, who are now my colleagues, by their first names. It was always Mr. Chesney, Ms. Smith, Ms. Shoemake, the entire time that I taught with them. Everyone knew who Ms. Jones was. She taught AP US history. Some students would say, you want to avoid her at all cost. Other students would say, She's a really hard grader, but you really want to take her class. After 20 years in the same place, I wanted to stretch my abilities, my talents, and open new doors to see the world from different perspectives. Change allows us to grow, develop, and adapt. So therefore, I upended my career, my life, and jumped into teaching abroad. The last 11 years, I have taught in three different countries. Now, this was a big change, one that I often question why I wanted to leave the comfort of what I knew to one where the languages, the cultures, and the subjects I taught were so varied. Perhaps the most significant change that has occurred in the last 31 years is my philosophy of teaching and the technology of education. Although these changes expanded my knowledge and creativity, the students have remained the cornerstone of my teaching. Let's go back to my first classroom. It had an overhead projector that uses transparencies. If I needed information, I went to the card catalog in the library, and the card catalog was Google before Google was Google. Most of the technology that I used 31 years ago is obsolete. In fact, you would probably have to Google it to identify it. When I began teaching, the textbook was at the center of what was taught. And that was facts, facts, and more facts. What was the event? When did it occur? Maybe cause and effect? All taught chronologically. Today, I use a smart board. I get my music from YouTube or Spotify. Uh, I do still have my iPod Classic, and yes, I do still use it. Students have smartphones and tablets and laptops that they bring to class with them to have ease of access to information uh, that they may need or want. There are even apps that we can use in and out of the classroom uh, to learn and communicate. I was excited for all these new technological advances and, and how I could use them more creatively in the classroom. But looking back, the biggest thing to change was really the ease of access to information. The information was at the tip of our fingertips. All we had to do was to type into Ask Jeeves, I mean Google. Ask Jeeves was my first search engine. Today, with information so easily accessible to me and my students, I have almost abandoned textbooks. I do still like my students to read textbooks or their e-textbooks. Reading, especially textbooks, is still a fundamental skill that students need to practice. Today, I give my students primary source documents to read, think about, and analyze. I, get, I ask them to uh, the what, the why, the how of the document, the implicit and explicit meaning of the document. Then, I give them a document that is the opposite of the first and ask them, who's right? Why? 31 years ago, I was asking students to regurgitate what they'd learned from a textbook or a lecture. Today, I am asking them to think. My favorite question that students have asked over the years is, why do you always answer a question with a question? My answer? Why do you think I do that? One of my favorite quotes that I use during open house is from Socrates. I cannot teach anybody anything. 
I can only make them think. The last half of my teaching journey has been learning to teach students to think, to become critical readers, critical thinkers, and not to go out and look for the easy answers, but the difficult ones. So the one major thing that has happened in education is easier access to information. Who doesn't like to see the Aiga Sophia as we talk about Constantinople and how it becomes Istanbul? Who doesn't like to see the Declaration of Independence as a music video called Too Late to Apologize? One of my all-time favorites. And who doesn't like learning from a good TED Talk? All tools I have now at my disposal. Despite these many changes, there has been one constant, and that has been my students. It is the students who have kept me focused and inspired. It is the students who I must focus on. If they do not get the lesson, then I must reteach it a different way, even if I had something else planned for them that day. It is not the score, the grade, the data that is important. It is the student. When students voice their concern about that they didn't make the grade they wanted, I always ask them, but did you learn something? The answer is almost always yes. Students inspire me with the questions that they come up with and the projects that they have created. There was the grass hut for the South American Museum project, the 1920s radio program that students take. This was before all the technology. There's the intensity that students showed in creating uh, survivor teams in AP US history competitions. The world history students created uh, virtual museums over the Khanate. It is amazing what students can create. Today, I have students who are nurses, doctors, entrepreneurs, scientists, artists, and parents. It will be my students who introduce me to memes by making me a meme. It will be my students who helped me create my first YouTube channel so that now I can have a classroom hub of music that I can play at the beginning of each uh, class period. It will be my students in the last two years of pandemic teaching to help me navigate the multitude of new programs, virtual learning, hybrid learning, and tell me, Ms. Jones, you're on mute. It is because of students who, are, who have organized and are running this TEDx Youth Talk that I am here before you today. My focus on students has not changed in all the years that I have been teaching. Students are, students have always been the center of what I do, how I do it, and why I am still here doing what I love. I've always strived to continue to learn and grow, and I want to spark that curiosity in my students. Today, my classroom has a smart board, 20 student desk, and a teacher willing to challenge her students. But most importantly, students willing to learn. Thank you.